today I was hoping we chat about, and I'm getting some guidance from you with regards to how to manage my athletes. Okay. Well, um, I work in the world of professional sport. I manage professional athletes. Mm -hmm. And as you know, it's 99% mental and 1% physical. Absolutely. And in the world of spirituality, you all focus 100% of your energy on controlling the mind. That's right. Which brings us to where we are today. That's right. So we're currently going to be moving into the IPL and I work with a team called Kings 11 Punjab. Okay. okay. The IPL is a high pressure time, extremely high pressure time. You know, there's so much riding. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing worse than a distracted mind during a high pressure time. Right. A distracted mind can be in the past, can be in the future, can be in successful or negative events. Correct. But to really unlock one's true potential, we need to be in the now. Yep. And there's probably no one better who practices being in the now than someone who's in the spiritual realm of life. Yeah. So how can you help us or help my athletes stay in the now? Or what are the advice do you have for yeah. them? I think when we talk about uh, being in the present, we don't have to start getting into the present when the pressure is high. We need to start practicing being in the present when the pressure is low. There's a very nice quote that I read once in one of the barracks of the Indian Army, which said, when you sweat a lot in times of peace, you bleed less in times of war. Right. IPL, for instance, cricket. Yes. Now, when the match is on, the world tournament's on, the, uh, the competition stops, you're right there under the spot which means the pressure is high and you need to be focused, you need to be present. You can only do it effectively when you learn to be present in the smaller things of life. I often tell people that when we talk about being present, one thing that we should start practicing is start being physically present. Like I give the example, I have a glass of juice here, you know. When I'm sipping this mango juice, why do I need to watch television? Why do I have to ch keep checking messages on my phone? What I'm doing by looking at the television, by looking at the phone, is being distracted from drinking the juice. So if I'm drinking the juice, let me just drink the juice. What's happening is I'm being present, physically present. Now it's not so much about just being drinking the juice, but about cultivating the attitude behind drinking the juice of being present in what I'm doing. I also tell people, beyond being physically present, we need to also be emotionally present. Very often you see people today are talking to each other, chatting with each other, they're looking around here and there, they're scrolling on their phones, they're looking at their messages, they're sending WhatsApp messages. What they're doing is they're completely getting distracted and not learning to live in the now. Being emotionally present means when I'm talking to you, for instance, I am with you. I'm not looking at this plant behind me. I'm not looking at the camera here. I'm not looking at the cup of juice. I'm looking at you. I'm soaking in every single word as you speak. Now, it's not just about speaking. It's about cultivating the attitude of being present. I, as a monk, for the last 22 years, practice mantra meditation or chanting and it's about tuning into the sound of this mantra. If I have to reap the most spiritual merit out of my practicing of this mantra meditation, I have to be present and tuned into the vibration of the sound. Now the minimum I could do is not get distracted externally, I'll probably close my eyes. But there's internal distractions. Like you said rightly, the past, the future, so many thoughts just being scattered all over the place. Which is why I feel the mind is like a pendulum. The pendulum comes to its mean from the extremities by itself. Yes. But the mind does not come from the extremities of past and the future by itself. We have to bring it there. And then I also talk about being professionally present, which is where the IPL context comes in. Yes. But you have to be present, completely focused. Why are we talking about being focused and present during the final match? Let's start being present during our practice hours. Which is why 
these little things these small things in our life day to day life actually train us to develop the attitude of being present and attitude does not discriminate between a cup of juice a person whom i'm talking to a cricket bat when i'm playing a match yeah. or my chanting beads when i'm practicing mantra meditation yes. attitude is attitude if i cultivate the attitude of being present in the small things it percolates into every area of life and then it can also be possibly brought in the larger things of life when the pressure is high okay so i like that i like I like how you say that attitude is agnostic of what you're doing and sure. where you are. Sure. So, the best way for an athlete to practice presence of mind is start with the simple things. That's right. Start with the simple things. Pay hundred percent attention to it. Yes. And then, when pressure is at its most, you'll be able to execute and have clarity of thought at that time. Yes, the attitude will come across. Attitude. You wouldn't have to do too much consciously. Yes. It'll come forth. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you.